Hi everyone, this is Vintage Sewing Machine Garage and I am going to make uh, a few more videos. haven't made many lately, been super busy, but I wanted to finally get around to restoring this sewing machine. This is a white 1563 and a lot of times you guys know that I'll, I'll estimate when I think a machine was made, but sometimes I get a sewing machine that is basically from the same family from when it was new. And very often, uh, when a family has a sewing machine that they've kept, they often have the original paperwork. And so, uh, I have quite a few things that are going to come with this machine. One of the things I have is a quick steps to easy sewing. So, if you don't want to go back and read the whole manual, there's just like a... This is basically for when you're starting out. Or, let's say you haven't sewn in a while and you don't really want to read the whole manual. But... Uh, it also comes with a number of feet and attachments that I've included. Uh, you'll see those in the photos on the Craigslist post. Um, but one of the things I thought was really cool, I sometimes get paperwork, and there's a lot of um, the heritage or history of the machine. So, for example, I don't know if this is going to show up or not for you guys, but it was purchased. It says service policy. Date of purchase, April. It's like April 5th, 1964. has the serial number, the model number. And then it says uh, 365 days free service. It was sold by Love Loves, and um, it looks like Mr. Mr. or Mrs. Love. It was a sewing dealer, and it says Jonesboro, Arkansas. And so, um, anyway, whoops, I hit the hit the pedal there. Uh, but anyway, just kind of a neat thing. Uh, and again, you can get PDFs of these, but it's always nice to have the original manuals. This one's has a very large print. Um, but the, the, the table uh, is included with the machine. It's a gorgeous t uh, cherry table. Uh, and it comes, like I say, you'll notice that this machine is, um, is turquoise. It's a two-tone. And turquoise is often associated with 1950s. But one of the reasons you still see it, it was such a popular color, say from the mid to late 50s, even in 64, you were still getting consumer items in the color. Um, <clears throat> so by the 60s, the White Company, which was the primary, I guess it was the largest competitor to Singer, they, uh, they were making their machines in Japan. This one was made in Japan. And one of the things that White did was they, they wanted to sort of one-up the competition. And so their motors were some of the most powerful ever putting a, put in a sewing machine. It's a 1.3 amp motor. Uh, and it's really strong, and I'm, I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm going to turn the camera. I've got a ton of different fabrics here that I can sew on, everything from cargo pants to chenille, um, heavyweight, I mean really heavy uh, drapery fabric, uh, high-density nylon for backpacks, um, and just, and of course, denim, of course. But anyway, if you're looking at machines where you need power and you really don't want to have to deal with a machine that's going to be sort of um, a wimpy when it comes to sewing heavy stuff or sewing light stuff. You could sew silk with this machine. Uh, it has, you, can, you have the ability to lower the feed dogs and like all of my machines I restore that function as well. <clears throat> Most of the time those functions are never broken, they're just stuck because no one ever used them. But anyway, you have uh, something really nice here. You have adjustable needle position so you can move your needle to the left or the right. Not all machines from this era have that. You have presser, press, presser foot uh, presser bar. You have a light on the front, which I'm not using right now. And um, let's see, you have all your oiling points on top. And then, of course, you have zigzag. So for those of you who need zigzag, if you're going to be sewing um, anything where you want to reinforce corners, this would be useful, but you don't have to use it. But anyway, I'm going to uh, do some sewing for you guys now. Um, this machine, like I say, is one of those that I kind of, I really like it because it, it's essentially, um, it was a one owner, you know, and it was so beautifully cared for, and you can see the, the, the shine on the paint is just beautiful, and now I'm going to, I'm going to change to a zigzag, <clears throat> and there's a little knob on the front here, you just adjust it, and it will lock the zigzag in for you, so you don't have to hold it, and and again, zigzag today, you know, people have sergers today, and so zigzag may not be all that impressive, but let me tell you, back then, you know, we didn't really have home sergers or overlock machines back in the 60s. You know, if you were going to do any kind of um, 
uh, locking in of, of uh, fabric edges, you really needed zigzag. So let me come back up here. I've got a wide, uh, long zigzag. I've got it on wide, and now I want to, I'm going to shorten my stitch length, which I do on this little dial here. And then I can uh, show you a much closer zigzag. Of all the Japanese made machines, whites are some of the strongest. And again, they were a big company. You, can, you may still be able to buy a machine under the white name, but if anyone could give Singer a run for their money, it was the white company. And this machine, again, you saw me really rev it up. You can sew a lot faster. For those of you who are quick sewers, you, uh, you can certainly sew faster than I am. I, I like to slow it down so you guys can see the motion of the, uh, the machine itself. And there you are. You can see, uh, let's see here, try to get zoom in a little bit for you. You're going to see my straight stitches, which are gorgeous, and then the zigzag. And then you'll also see the, you know, you see... Whoops, let's see if it's going to focus for you guys. There we go. Um, and then on the other side, I used a different color thread so you could see the, the uh, stitches on the other side. So, again, I think I want to lighten my thread tension just a bit so my fabric doesn't pucker. A lot of times I switch fabric weights, and so you want to adjust your tension just a little bit. <clears throat> let's see, I'm going to try something different. I often sew denim. Let me try this webbing. Now, some of you who make handbags, you might be in a situation where you would like to sew uh, webbing. Sometimes it's leather, sometimes it's this. This is just a heavy cotton webbing. And so I'll, let's see, I'll try to go back to a wide zigzag. Uh, many of you would use zigzag to reinforce your webbing. Uh, let's see, let's go back to a long stitch. And we're on wide. Let's come down. And this machine is so strong, you know, it's sewing he thick webbing uh, quickly. Now I'm going to slow down and make sure I can get, get that really thick seam under the presser foot, and I did. Now that black thread I'm using on the top is not going to show here, but let's see, let's see if I can get you guys to see the, uh, the bottom thread, which is sort of this magenta pink color. Let's see here. And there you can see, let me see if I can get a little more light on there. I want you to see how the zigzag went right over that very thick seam with no problems. And I'm going to go grab a, a piece of garment leather. I want you guys to see it sewing that. Okay, guys, I'm back. I went, <clears throat> went to get some uh, garment leather. I've got two pieces of this uh, brown garment leather here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, sew these together. Uh, let's see to cut off a third piece for you. The main thing you want to notice about most sewing machines, and I've got some treadles that do differently, is if you're going to sew leather, you want to sew garment leather. This is leather that's very flexible. And you can sew multiple layers with it, but you want to make sure that it's not very board stiff. If it's stiff as a board, there are different sewing uh, machines that will do that for you. But most of you, when you're sewing leather, you want garment leather. That's what you're doing. So let's start with two layers. I should also mention, you guys, I don't know if you can see this, you'll see it in the photos, there's a wonderful uh, uh, 60s chair, sewing chair that goes with this. It looks really, just really neat. i um, not sure it showed up well in the photos, but... Now, this, the needle I have in here right now is an Oregon, made in Japan, Oregon brand uh, sewing needle, and it's, a, it's actually a, a jeans needle, what we call a jeans needle here in the US, and um, where's my, there we go. <clears throat> Ideally, you would be using a leather tipped needle if you're gonna sew leather, but for the purposes of showing you guys and not making you wait for me to change the needle out. Uh, oh, let me go back. You can do zigzag with leather, but I wanna go back and um, do straight stitch for you. Do a long straight stitch here. I wanna make sure that you can see uh, and I'll start with my needle down just for the heck of it. And you'll see me, I'm going at a, at a pretty good, you know, nice even pace here. I could go faster. Many of you don't want or need to go fast, and I don't recommend it anytime you're sewing a heavy fabric or leather. It's kind of silly. This machine has the power. It probably will do it, but 
no need to. And <clears throat> and I'll come back a little faster. And like I say, it goes right through the leather, no problem. But remember, this is garment leather, not saddle leather for a horse. Do not uh, make the mistake of uh, trying some of the things you see on YouTube and other places. Some people do uh, demonstrations with, of machines with things they're not really designed to do, which is unfortunate. Okay, let's see if I can get you guys. You can see the stitches. Yeah, beautiful stitches going right through. And again, the suede side, you're not going to see much. You can see a little bit of the paint, but it's hard to see the stitch, I know. So, <clears throat> I'm going to put a third piece on here. And I'll, excuse me, I'll put it with both sides having leather up so you can see. Maybe see the stitches a little better. Machine's very easy to thread, as most vintage machines are. It uses a class 15 bobbin, which Singer invented that uh, about a hundred years ago or more. And it's a very common bobbin system. You'll see bobbins for these machines in sewing shops, although I have uh, vintage bobbins for you to use. Now, let's try this. Got three layers, went right through, no problem. And again, I can make the machine so faster, it, it doesn't lack the power to do it. But again, when you're feeding thick things under the presser foot, you know, give the machine time to, to, to chew on what it is you're asking it to sew, and you're going to be a lot more successful that way. And I sped it up a little bit there at the end. Let's take a look so you guys can see what she did. Here's the, the black thread or the top side, if you will. And here we go. And I, I put the uh, other third piece of leather, I turned it leather side up so you could see. Sorry, there we go. Yeah, that's a little sharper for you guys. You can see the quality of the stitch, guys. It, I mean, it's just incredible. Um, and this motor is part of it. The white motors were some of the strongest and best made motors I've ever come across. Uh, I would put them up there with the Singer motors. Singer and White had some of the finest motors you'll find. But again, uh, let's see how much time. But again, guys, if you have any comments or questions, please let me know. Uh, oh, by the way, you can do double needle stitching on this if you want to. It's, it's designed for it. I, I, uh, I typically don't demonstrate the machines that way, but it can certainly do it if you wish. Um, and if you'd like to set up a time to come and see the machine, I have obviously tons of different kinds of fabrics you can try out. Uh, I can easily teach you how to use this machine. It's painfully easy. Uh, and so you're welcome to write me on Craigslist and let me know what you think. I appreciate it. Thank you.